How's it going guys? Today I'm back with Luke from Beach's Scaly Beasts and we're going to do a quick little update on everything that's been going on here and since the last year or so that I haven't been here. So let's check it out. What's new since last time I was here? Well, right, lots changed, that's for sure. Um, I've downsized the collection quite considerably um, for multiple reasons, but mainly I just wanted to give more to the animals that I wanted to work with and kind of just retain a bit of focus in what I wanted to work with. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, it physically looks a lot different in here and outside's a little bit different as well. Um, I've made Loki a great big new enclosure and uh, some of the monitors have got a bit of an upgrade. Um, so I've sold on some species that I no longer wanted to work with necessarily and kind of retained that focus into different things. So snakes, I'm kind of just getting more into my greens and my diamonds in particular, apart from a couple of pet snakes. Uh, monitor wise, I've moved on my Ackies and I'm kind of sticking to my Tristus genus with the, the or Tristus species rather, with the um, blackheads and the freckled monitors. Um, also keeping Gillen's monitors, and then, yeah, Loki's still here as a pet. I'd love to find him a female one day, but that seems a little bit harder than most would think. Um, and I've got a Kimberly Rock monitor still as well. So, yeah, just kind of retaining that focus a little bit. Still got the blotch blue tongues. I've moved on most of my Easterns apart from the uh, melanistic blue tongue. Done new turtle pond as well, so kind of reinvented that, um, which is quite cool. Uh, but yeah, as I said, just trying to give more to the animals that I've got, give them more space, more attention, yeah. keep my husbandry up a little bit better. Um, not that I thought it was lacking necessarily, but that more attention you can give to any yeah. animals in the lower... You can always do are. more. Yeah. You can always do more, exactly right. So just, I think more space for a lot of animals is yeah, is really great. Um, so yeah, just doing things like that. And just, yeah. Nice. And it is looking great, you know. The theme I've sort of been seeing is just, yeah, bigger, better enclosures and more focus on the specific animals which we of course love so yeah we'll have a little look around and have a little update on all the animals that are still here cool so yeah this year um we're going to do or we'll try to breed it my my older greens um i just love these snakes that's what got me into snakes originally is always wanting to own these this species in particular um so yeah this year is my first attempt. I've actually got a little camera that I've just taken down for now, but we'll show you that later. Uh, just to keep an, an eye on these guys overnight with the, the infrared and everything, just to see what activities are. Um, I've also added in a nest box as well, just so, uh, you know, a couple months down the track, if the female is luckily growing, then uh, hopefully we'll get some eggs out of her. And, and, you know, she's used to the box and everything. Um, but yeah, it's one species that I'm definitely trying to obtain a few more animals of. I, I just, you can't go wrong with these things. Yeah, absolutely yeah. stunning. Some of the best snakes in Australia, that's for sure. Even in the world, I'd say. <laughs> Brilliant. And they're, they're reasonably low maintenance at the end of the day too. Like I think yeah. a lot of a lot of information that's out there about how to keep them is a little bit a little bit old nowadays. You know, definitely spraying down your snakes, like your, your greens in particular. Um, not a lot of guys are doing that too regularly these days either. I find if you, as long as you're keeping them well hydrated with the drinking water or you know with even just wetting down their rodents or sometimes even injecting rodents with a little bit of water um, then you're not getting those kind of prolapse problems and things like that not keeping them too hot so this garage does get quite hot um, but I do run an aircon on those sort of days where it does overheat a little bit and turn off all the lights to the other animals um, but yeah we'll see how they go this little male's been very active and moving around the enclosure every night and the females She's still a little bit unsure about what his advances are, but <laughs> yeah, we'll see how it all happens. Yeah, I wish you the best of luck because some little baby greens would just be absolutely awesome. I think it's one species that I'd be very greedy with it on and end up probably keeping most of yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, cool. Well, yeah, so um, I've got another little green tree python recently. Got him uh, from Andy from Fuzzy Fox Reptiles and Rodents. Um, Great little animal, he's just settling in now, he hasn't been here that long. 
Um, so yeah, hopefully uh, he'll be quite happy in this new little environment. But yeah, absolutely loving him. Uh, yeah, so the Trishas Trishas have been doing good this year. I've updated their enclosure into this uh, Reptile One enclosure. I've made a few different alterations to it as well. So I've, you know, put a little little uh, board at the front just to hold a little bit more soil and everything in the enclosure. Also coated it with uh, your pond sealer as well, just to keep the humidity in and stop the wood, wood from rotting. Uh, so these guys have been doing great this year. We've got a couple of clutches out of them. First clutch of uh, just three little babies um, came out. Um, and we've got another clutch of uh, eight eggs, but I reckon maybe only seven out of the eight will actually make it. But they've been thriving in this enclosure with a full, full cage nesting as well, just the way I like it. So yeah, absolutely doing great. You've always done really good with the Tristus. Yeah. So what's the story with these other ones? So freckled monitors are in these two. And of course, they don't want to show themselves at all. Yeah. Oh, the males. I was kind of peeking up over one of those homemade uh, termite mounds. Um, but yeah, so these new enclosures, I got them in recently. Um, just more space. I think more space for, in particular, your goannas. It's, it's pretty important. Um, yeah, really, really loving the enclosures. They do have a few minor faults, but nothing that can't be worked on. Um, but yeah, again, just trying to do the full cage nesting with the dirt piled up against the back there. Um, so we've got my adult pair of freckled monitors in the bottom here. And then I also bred, uh, I only got two babies out last year and they're in the, the top enclosure up there, probably hiding. Um, I'll get them out later to show you. Um, so yeah, they're, they're actually very luckily they're a pair as well. So I'll probably reverse the pairing and, you know, put um, daughter over dad and, and uh, yeah. Mum over son, so to speak, just to mix the genetics up a little bit for next year. But at the moment, mm. they're they're almost adult size, but they're not quite there. So probably mm. next season, I'll be trying to really nail these guys down. Yeah, nice. Wish you best of luck with that. And what's the go with these termite mounds? They're pretty cool. Yeah. So I actually had a little bit of inspiration from one of the guys that I used to work with. Um, he made a uh, fake termite mound for his uh, black-headed python. Yep. Um, but I wanted to do it a little bit differently and actually have access inside the termite mounds. I didn't know if these guys would use it necessarily, but they certainly are. So there's a plastic pot plant underneath those and I coated that with expanding foam. And after I coated it with expanding foam and let it all bubble up, I kind of shaped it a little bit. And then I covered it in pond sealer, threw cement all over it just to harden it up. After that, I went over with uh, terracotta paint and then um, while the terracotta paint was wet, I was throwing red reptile sand at it as well. So I seem mm. to be yeah. standing up to you know having little claws running all over them. All, so it looked pretty cool, and they they love hiding in them, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anytime I try to find my female, she's in one of them, um, and the male quite often is sticking his head out of one of them as well. And nice. yeah, love love sitting up and feeling safe on top of them as well. So here's a, a new addition since the last time I was here. Got this just recently after I filmed here last time. So what's this one? This is a Kimberly Rock Monitor. Got him from Rob. Pretty sure it's a little male. He's in shed now as well, unfortunately. Yeah. Starting to pack on some size now, but he's taken a little while to, to kind of grow. A beautiful little animal. The tail's absolutely stunning. Yeah, they're beautiful. Some of the coolest monitors around, I reckon. I'd love to get my hands on another one, but yeah, just need to wait for the right time. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And he's just living in here, got some, you know, rocky outcrops and stuff. So, something I have fallen in love with recently, and I think actually you're partly to blame for this, is the <laughs> Yuki mulch. Yeah, love it. I absolutely adore it, and I'm using it for everything from, you know, blue tongues, monitors, snake, the, the works, <laughs> everybody's getting the Yuki mulch. It's, it's good it stuff, man. It just feels so natural. It's got a good know. smell, it's real clean, it's cheap, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. Holds humidity if you want it to hold humidity, yeah. it stays dry if you want to keep it dry. That's it. That's, what is it, usually about eight, nine dollars for a yeah. 60 litre bag? It's, yeah, it's fantastic stuff. That Bunnings, so. cheap as. It's great stuff. Yeah, absolutely love it. But yeah, yeah, it just looks really good too. Easy, easy to clean, you know, it's, it's yeah. light and compact so you can bag it up real easy when you do need to do a full enclosure clean out. Um, but it's perfect for little guys like this who need a little bit of, little bit of humidity from time to time. Hmm. <laughs> and if you want to see more of these little dudes, make sure you check out Keepers Collections Episode 3. 
where you'll see Rob, who he bought this from, and all the parents and everything. He's got a gazillion of them, I swear. They're just awesome. Yeah, that's that little chap. And he's awesome. He's, has he got a name? Uh, Mr. Wiggles. Mr. Wiggles. Awesome. Yeah, just because he wiggles. Yeah. <laughs> bit of a nickname more than anything. But yeah. yeah. Not, a, not every one of my animals has a name, but yeah, some of them that are going to be here for a long time will yeah, give him a bit of a nickname anyway. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, when I bought him, he would have been head to tail, you know, the length of what his body is now minus the tail. So he would have yeah, only been probably about 10 to 12 centimetres. Fair enough. So, yeah, that's going about a year ago now. Going strong. Getting it. Yeah. Awesome. So what do you got in your, your rack there, Luke? Uh, so, yeah, this new rack, which um, I built a, a little while ago now, I've got uh, my first snake ever, which is just a Stimson's python up in this top tub. Um, then I've got my first carpet python that I ever bought, which is a black and gold jungle in this tub. And then recently I've actually acquired two really nice looking diamonds. Um, which are uh, one of the species that I want to tar target this year and I've always been in love with just because they're endemic to the area. Um, so yeah, got a male and a female there. Then uh, the male's quite small, but I'm going to try to put him over my, my big female that's in the four by four foot mm. enclosure over the other side this year and it just see if he's awesome. up to the task. Yeah, yeah. so here we've got that, that pair of diamonds that I was talking about a little bit earlier. Uh, Coop's actually got the female in his hand Absolutely there. beautiful. Look at those colours. Nice yellows and that. I've got the male in my hands who unfortunately is in shed, but he does actually look quite like the female there. Um, maybe not quite as yellow, but still quite up there. They're a little bit wiry at this size, but it's coming out so yeah. good. Um, yeah, so these guys I acquired off a, off a lady that wasn't too far from here. She just decided that she didn't want to keep them anymore. And apparently the parents actually, um, uh, there's like a little, so essentially like mini wildlife park in Darling Harbour next to the aquarium there and the parents are actually down there these guys are yeah, coming up to about three years old I think now so they've, they've been grown very slow hmm. um, which isn't a bad thing but I've been putting a little bit of size on them just because my female that this boy is going to go in with is quite large so I want to make sure that he's got a little bit of size at least before yeah. he goes in with her this winter yeah, awesome new additions though absolutely beautiful I think you can't go past the diamond python, really. They're real hardy and stuff, so... Yeah, if, as long as you're not cooking them too hot. You now everyone worries about that diamond python syndrome, but that's gone all the days. And, you know, if they're not getting up to 35 degrees, then they're yeah. fine. These guys, are, I just currently kept in that rack. The yep. rack only gets up to about 32 at the hot spot, but I find that these guys kind of really sit at the body preferred temperature of around 30 to 29. And then they've got the option to get down to about kind of mid-20s as well, so... So, this girl I didn't get to film last time because she was stubbornly hiding in her log. But, um, yeah, this is Luke's big diamond. And what's the story with her, man? Uh, so, I actually bought her through a friend through Sydney Wildlife when I was working with those guys. A um, uh, lady was moving over to Perth. Obviously, couldn't take it over to WA because they're not allowed there. Um, she'd be probably about 12 years... 11 to 12 years old I'd say now sort of in that that age vicinity I think she was about seven years old when I got her yeah um yeah loving having her in this enclosure she's got way more space uh what I'm doing just to heat her up in this enclosure just keeping it simple is I've got a heat cord wrapped in between a few tiles yep nothing too crazy then I've got a nice big big hide that she can hide in that sits on top of that um but yeah this is the girl that I'm planning to to breed this year and yeah she's definitely got the size in. for it yeah <laughs> Yeah, she's definitely got the size and I've been priming her a little bit over the last mm. four to five months. But you know what? I, diamonds don't need a lot of food either. I think everyone forces way too much food on their diamonds. This girl probably only gets fed like 12 to 15 times mm. a year. <laughs> yeah, and is that her normal colours or is she... She's a little bit dusty at the yeah. moment. But yeah, that normal sort of yellowish colours to her. She's not... I, I wouldn't call her anything too crazy, but... Yeah. Um, Still nice. It's a diamond. <laughs> Still a nice looking diamond and I think she'll pair up well with that, that younger male hopefully. So yeah. I think the color, colors will really set each other off. So here we have what we would probably describe as the king of the reptile room I'd say. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. This is Big Loki in his massive new enclosure, which is absolutely awesome. So tell us what's been going on, Luke. 
Well, last time everyone, uh, sorry, last time Pippa was here, obviously he was in a, a lot smaller enclosure, he was a lot smaller animal, and I was saying how I wanted to do a, a decent upgrade on his enclosure. Um, yeah, so I put a bit of time and effort into this one, a bit of planning and everything going ahead with it. Um, so this enclosure is definitely probably my most in-depth enclosure. Uh, all the timber works obviously just made out of 17 mil ply. Uh, inside's all been waterproof as per most of my monitoring enclosures in particular because he's in a very humid environment and he's in and out of the water all day. Uh, so as he's coming out, he's wetting all the timber so we don't need to rot, rot that. In this enclosure, he's got a nice little basking spot up here that gets up to about 65 degrees Celsius. He's got a mercury vapor bulb up there as well as just a normal heat light. A um, couple of reasons I did that. Not only did I not at the time have enough money for one more mercury vapor bowl, but I also kind of wanted to see if he could recognize the difference in between the two. And he definitely sits under the mercury vapor bowl when he can tell that that's putting out UV. So as much as a lot of people don't keep UV on their monitors, and I'm, you know, I'm the same, and some of my monitors don't have access to it, I still think it's an important thing to be giving them, hmm. given the opportunity, because I think they'll thrive with it. So after the, the um, basking spot up there, we've actually got a little hot box down the, down in this section of the enclosure. So this has um, actually got some tiles in the bottom of it with a heat cord that's set to about 28 degrees just so it, at night if he wants to warm up he can climb into there and feel nice and secure and he uses that spot most nights to actually go and, and warm up in there. Hmm. Up the top over here we've also got another little basking site that's just got a, a an actual um, heat panel above it so oh, it's yeah. only set to about 30 degrees so it yeah. only comes up on really cold days but it's just to keep that residual temperature up in the enclosure again just because they is a yeah. tropical species i don't want to get them too cold that's it um you know in particular while he's a little bit young yeah um not that i think you'd worry him too much now but it's just yeah on those colder days yeah he's got a yeah i love the design of this this fish tank you can see right through the side of it so cool how big is this one uh so it's actually one of the um 120 centimeter reptile one turtle tanks. Yep. So I'm not using the internal filtration on this tank just because water monitors just clog everything up. No matter what you do, they're going to defecate in the water. So just be prepared if you do own one of those things. It's big water changes constantly. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I wanted to integrate a water feature that I could actually physically see him swimming up and down in and enjoy him swimming like a crocodile. Because I mean, yeah. let's face it, this is a, one of the closest animals you can have in New South Wales that's like a crocodile. So. <laughs> Hence why I've got him. Um, but yeah, so this holds about uh, about 300 litres of water, I believe. So it's a decent decent amount of water. Mm. I'm pretty lucky that where he is situated currently, I can pump out the water onto the grass quite easily. Yeah. I actually use this, this bung on the side of the enclosure to put a hose through so I can keep the enclosure locked and let it drain. And I don't have to disturb Loki at all. You know, don't have any risk of him clawing his way out at all. Um, and then on the outside of the enclosure down here, I actually have a little little panel there that's just yep. access to all the electrical. So if I need to turn off oh, and stuff like that's that, that's really I smart. Can get into that. Yeah. So I thought you just went in through the back where that that thing lifts up there. But yeah. The, the, you could you could go in through that way, but you know it's a bit more effort to obviously be getting in and doing that. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's really smart. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome enclosure. Um, I do have it propped up with a bit of gum tree in the middle as well, just to try to hold the weight of not only yeah. this enclosure, but also the ones on on top. Because um, it is like really long across there, it would probably be inevitable for it to eventually bend down a bit. Oh yeah, exactly. The glass and stuff. Exactly, like I've, I've put a, a bit of brace ply through the middle of it as well, just yeah. to try to help it, but at the end of the day, the more support the better. I don't That's want it. the glass cracking and yeah. them escaping or anything like that. So yeah, the enclosure dimensions, it's about two meters long, 1.2 top tall, and then yeah, about 900 mil deep, I think, mm. on the top of my head from memory. Um, these glass panels, these are actually, I just special ordered them in, they're off one of the, the largest Reptile 1 vivariums, and obviously instead of just having them tall, I've put them yeah, sideways okay. on one of the Bunnings glass runners. Nice. Um, I've got a few mounts in here for, for GoPros to put them around <laughs> in here, just so if I decide to want to you know, sneak on him for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I can do that. Um, and make sure you check out Luke's YouTube channel, Beaches Scaly Beasts, because he did a video on this, making this entire enclosure. And he, of course, puts up videos on his Facebook and stuff with those GoPros of not so little Loki hunting and swimming around. So yeah, make sure you check that out. Here, he was probably at least half the size of that. Yeah, he's a, a, yeah, definitely doubled in size, if not more. He is a monster now. And he's actually feeding in front of you, which is good. 
Yeah, well, uh, last last time I, I hadn't seen him eat personally for about a year or so. Um, so that's why I was putting the GoPro in the enclosure to actually see what he was up to. Um, day day two, I think, of being in this enclosure, he actually ate for me from the tongs. So oh, yeah. I don't know whether it was just this enclosure or whether he was just ready for it, but I think this enclosure has made him way more confident in himself. Yeah. He sits out and basks actively in front of me, um, as you can see. Whereas in the last enclosure, he'd generally run yeah. away. But I, I think that comes with the size and confidence yeah. thing as well. Yeah, that's... Yeah. But, you know, that's a lot more enjoyable when you can actually <laughs> yeah. interact with your animal. He's definitely saying, thanks, Dad, for this. Yeah. I love this bedroom. It's really cool. <laughs> oh, he's a bit of a pig too now, so he, he definitely gets spoiled. You know, all the uh, water and yabbies to work or, or whatever and you know, bring home quail and all sorts of tidbits for him. Yeah. So he's got a wide diet. You know, every now and then he might get lucky and catch a fish, but it's, it's a bit of a rarity. Yeah. He probably doesn't have the need to, to be honest. Yeah. Oh yeah, Loki is doing great. And this setup is awesome, man. Definitely make sure you check out that video, guys. Because this is a sick setup. So here we have a couple of this season's uh, babies. These came from a really red female and one of my semi-striped males as well. That's so nice. He got a really wicked selection of little blotches out this season. I'm very proud of him. <laughs> yeah, I um, had, had a litter of eight actually, and one unfortunately didn't make it, but I think that's just kind of a numbers game as yeah. well. Um, which, uh, you know, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. And then the other seven decided to power on. Um, this, this little guy here is in the middle of shed as well at the moment. But, um, yeah. yeah. I'm very happy to say that these guys are actually coming home with me today. I'm so stoked, especially for those patterns and colours. Camera does not even show it. But yeah, these guys are absolute rippers. So nothing really has changed too much with Billy. He's doing the same thing. He's been sitting on the same log since you guys have last left. <laughs> Hopefully a bit less grumpy than last time. I pissed him off when I was there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he's uh, he's doing well. He's um he's probably grown a bit since you've last. Yeah, he looks but... massive. Majestic. I mean, I, I, I don't see him grow that much. But, yeah, you know, that's it. He's going to get a new enclosure hopefully next weekend. We had a bit of a flood in here through the roof uh, with that new house storm that came through last week. So this whole bank of enclosure is going to be re rebuilt out of uni board. So he's one of the lucky guys that's going to be getting a uh, yeah brand new enclosure because, as everyone knows, melamine and water don't mix. So, mm -hmm. yeah, build up some plastic enclosures and um, yeah. hopefully they'll last a lifetime. Um, yeah, so nothing really new has changed with the Gillens monitor enclosure. I think the only thing new that's um, changed is that, again, I've put in a board in front um, just to hold more substrate in there for all cage nesting. Uh, and it really worked for me this year too. I got incredibly lucky. I, um, I don't see my female a whole, a whole lot. Uh, she's very secretive. In fact, this is probably the most I've seen her in the last fortnight, just the head coming out of the top of the log there. Um, I came in here one morning not too long ago, a few months ago couple of months ago even and uh, I thought a garden skink had broken into the enclosure because there was a little <laughs> what I thought was a garden skink sitting down in between the log here and uh, sorry the timber board here and the and the glass and uh, on closer inspection there was a baby Gillens monitor and I was kind of freaked out for a second I thought you beauty this is so lucky um, I then proceeded to open up the the enclosure door and uh, lo and behold another three were hiding down the bottom here as well and they dropped out so I managed to scoop up all four of them into a bucket quickly and uh, so, so, just so they didn't run off anywhere else into the garage and get lost. And uh, yeah, over the next couple of days, another three of them popped up as well. So I got very lucky and actually was able to incubate seven baby gillens in the enclosure. So um, I'm trying not to change my husbandry on this at all. I'm really trying to not disturb it at all. Um, so yeah, apart from picking up the occasional poo in here, then uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much trying to keep it the same, substrate the same and everything, just because if it's going to happen again, this is the best success that I've had with this species. Um, I have been a little bit greedy and decided to keep all seven for myself, at least for the foreseeable future. Um, so yeah, there you go, you know, they would have been incubating in there for about a hundred odd days. Um, just cooking away. So cool, man. I think it's Congrats a of, again. So yeah, nice. thank you. I was, very, as I said, very lucky, but yeah. it's a bit of a testament to the enclosure, I think. I remember, I remember messaging you and I was like, oh, are you going to get any Gillens? And you're like, no, nah, I don't think so. I think it's a dud season. Yeah. I'm pretty bummed. And then, boom, you get the seven babies out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> Stoked. Very lucky. I didn't know what to do with myself that day, that's for sure. <laughs> I, um, 
I thought all my all my Christmases had come at once. On a bit of a high that day. That's oh for sure. yeah, for sure. So here are the little babies over here. They're awesome. Always running around. And how have they been? Yeah, they've been firing away. I um, I will tell you another story which uh, kind of killed my high for a little bit. Uh, out of my excitement, I was in here playing in the enclosure a little bit, just picking a few monitors up, checking them out, and giving them a look over. And uh, one of them got out of my grasp and decided to run up over my shoulder, and he bailed into the garage. Oh no! And I was like, "That's it. I'm never seeing him again." I proceeded to chase him around for ages, try to find him, couldn't find him at all for the likes of me. Anyway, so uh, two weeks later, I'm checking inside my um, cricket tub up at the top there, and lo and behold, there's a baby Gillen sitting in the oh, that's so lucky in the cricket tub. So um, I was very lucky, caught him again. So I do have all seven, seven back in this enclosure. Um, they're just starting to warm up for the day too, so they're really, really starting to run yeah. around and have a bit of a search on the hunt. You wouldn't think there's seven of them in there, but um, yeah, no. they'll all be hiding under the the log and everything there. I'm just trying to keep it simple for them. Yeah, you know, just so not only can they find their food, but I can find them. Hmm. Yeah, they're awesome, man. Yeah, very lucky, just about due for a new enclosure, I'd say too, or you know, at least split them up into the smaller groups. Yeah. They've doubled in size, I'd say, now. Yeah. So yeah, these little Gillens monitors are absolutely awesome. One day I'll pull his leg enough for him to give me one. But, um, yeah, just have a look at them, they're so cool. They're one of my favourite little monitor species. And they are just absolutely wicked. Bit hard to hold on to at this size, yeah. you're kind of scared you're going to drop them, but they little worms. <laughs> These absolute little dragons. So, just recently, I was with Luke at the Penrith Expo, right? Yeah, Penrith. And he just picked up this little fella. It's a, it's a boy, right? Yeah, boy. Yeah. Beautiful little olive python. He's in shed at the moment, so I won't really make mess with yeah. him too much. But, uh, really cool species, that's for sure. And he's doing well? Yeah, he's doing alright. Starting to power along with food. Oh, nice. He was a little bit hit and miss when I first got him home, but that's to be expected with a lot of snakes, you know. Yeah. They can be a little bit finicky for a couple of weeks, but... No, he's settling into this enclosure well. This is only temporary, of course. There's no way that he's going to be living in this. Yeah, that's but, it. For probably much longer once he starts really powering on food I'd say he'll be going into the bigger rack and then yeah. from there I'll be making him something bigger. So for those of you that don't know olive pythons get absolutely huge. One of the biggest snakes in Australia and they're just gorgeous. And if anyone's got some water pythons yeah, please hit Luke is on the hunt. Them. I've been speaking to uh, speaking to a guy in Queensland I'm really really hoping he's got a clutch out at the moment I'm really hoping that uh, his take off on food, because um, they're being a little bit stubborn at the moment, but I might be lucky and score a couple from him, because that'd be another species that I'd love to work yeah, with. They're so it's beautiful. another one of those things you don't see around anymore, mm. you know. It's, they're not an expensive snake by any means, but yeah. it's just a beautiful animal, and not many people seem to be working with them. It'd be good to get more in the hobby. So, among other upgrades Luke's done, he's done a big upgrade to the turtle area, the bigger pond, and stuff like that, so, yeah. yeah. Just about doubled the volume of water, which is awesome. Um, I think I've still got the same amount of turtles, but I do have a couple of different turtles. I did have uh, two Macquarie eye here, but I've um, since got a couple of longies installed instead. So Macquarie eye I found a new home for and then adopted the longies in. I love long necks too. They've got so much personality, yeah. as you can see. Such cute different. little faces the way they look at you. Yeah. They're so funny. I'm actually really loving the rectangular pond, to be honest, and having more space at the front to actually come over and I yeah. find myself just staring into it quite often and watching these guys. And it also gives the Cunningham skink a lot more that lives in here, a lot more area to run around. And including all like this, you know, the rock ledges and everything, it just makes his land area a lot bigger for him. Yeah, he'd be loving it. Oh, he, 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 as I said to you earlier, you know, he's tunnelling around the side of the pond and yeah. you know, he's got his little spaces in here that he loves. Also, I upgraded the filter system as well and just used a um, little pitfall drain instead of the old plastic tub and mm -hmm. just re redid it. The other one was starting to leak a little bit. So I'm also growing plants in here, in, like even with the duckweed. Having the duckweed in here is good because the short necks eat it, so I can just take a handful of it out and put it in and they'll start, start yep. eating it eventually. Might be a little bit camera shy to do it now, but... Yeah. 
between them and the goldfish, they, yeah, they love getting into it. They're all eyeing me off. Yeah. <laughs> they're just waiting for real food. Mm. But yeah, so it's still got the same same two stories. We've got two long necks and one little creft in here. Pretty beautiful. A little bit bigger than last time. Yeah, they're definitely around. grown a lot. I just like keeping turtles outdoors. They're yeah. just rock hard little things. Actually, I really love this long neck too. I got this guy just before Christmas. Came in as an adoption. Lady couldn't care for it anymore. Um, the photos that were sent to me, I, I was actually thinking it was pretty horrible mm. conditions that it was living in. But you yeah. know what? This turtle is in 100% health. Wow. I couldn't believe it. Like, it was in a couple of inches of water in a fish yeah. tank that probably didn't Long necks are so tough, though. Yeah. I don't even think it had heat or UV or anything like that. I think it was, like, just mm. tanked with shallow water. Like, yeah, they can survive in some pretty nasty stuff in the wild, so... I love the coloration on yeah, the bottom yeah, of the shell too. Same as the the, the sauries, they've got quite good patterning hmm. beneath them. Anyway. Yeah, that's the turtles, loving the new pond and setup. Doing great as always. Yeah, so the blotchies are doing good. Not much has changed with these guys. I think the only thing that I have upgraded, if you could call it an upgrade, is I've actually insulated the back boxes just with some um, old you know, foam fish boxes that you get from your local fish shop or, you know, a, a veggie store or something like that. Yep. Just to provide a little bit more insulation from heat and cold and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, just a, I put a smaller hole in the end of the, the boxes as well, just so then they can really kind of squeeze through it. And just, yeah, a bit more protection from the weather, really. Uh, we've had some pretty wild rain recently, so the last thing I want is these guys to be getting mm. super wet and cold and everything. So, but yeah, so this is actually one of the babies from that I bred last year. Yeah, so, so in my last video I filmed, the female was pregnant with this baby. And she was huffing and puffing, and Luke was like, oh, I'm not sure if she'll, she'll pop. And I was like, oh, she's got, definitely got something. And there's the proof right there. She you got a good bunch of babies too, didn't you? Yeah, she dropped 10. 10. Which is a pretty big clutch. Yeah, that's, that's good blotchies. for blotchies, yeah. Hey guys, thanks to Luke for letting me come around again and film his collection. I know you guys loved the last video. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.